All right, so I'm gonna go over a game in the, the London system. Before I do that, I wanna explain a little bit about what my channel is gonna be about. Um, I was into chess between the ages of 14 and 17. You know, pretty serious, not too serious. I'd say age 17, I was like a 1900 rated player, maybe 2000 level. Um, you know, most kids are underrated. Um, and then I stopped playing. I studied a little bit for four years, played some online, but never played. I stopped playing tournaments, really. Um, I'm now 21. I'm probably around 2100 level, I would say. And I've gotten back into studying, so um, I am... I have been studying on openings for black, so in the perk and in the Grunfeld, and end games and tactics and stuff. So I've kind of neglected white, um, so I'm having to light, uh, light back on one of my favorite uh, side systems, the London system, which is, you know, scoffed at, but it's actually not bad. And I'm gonna um, start, and I'm recording these videos for myself to have them, because um, I find it hard to study with a book and a uh, board. It's easier for me to look at chess DVDs, so I'm going to make myself uh, uh, basically chess DVDs for lines that aren't on, that I can't download. So for the London, I'm going to... Uh, I have a lot of books. I'm going to record all, all the, the theory, and you can, look, you can watch it if you want. I'm going to upload it. I might as well. Um, if you guys have any requests for anything else, Specifically, I'll probably be doing some end games. I might do some tactics. Just tell me. Um, to start out with, I'm just gonna since I'm new to using this program, I'm just uh, testing it. I'm just gonna show you a, a really brief a blitz game that I played online today in the London. Um, uh, my opponent wasn't very strong. Maybe only 1800 on ICC, which you know, I've, I'm you know 2400 ICC, and I'm I'm not a <laughs> I'm nowhere near a 2400 level player, so you know. Let's see, so I started out with d4, um, you know, and bishop f4 is my second move. This looks awkward, but if you're actually going to play the London, uh, knight f3 first has some problems. It doesn't have problems, the move itself isn't obviously isn't bad, it's a good move, but it's not a good move, it, not the best move if you're planning on playing bishop f4. Uh, there's a lot of reasons for this, I'll, I'll just show you a really brief example of you know, a, a line that causes white problems. This line, uh... So now black will c4, taking his mistake, because now black will play like this, and pawn, storm, and he, he's really better here. So white plays his queen back, and now black has this uh, amazing move. White can't take this, because obviously he loses an exchange here. So... He's going to have to play this, queen c1, and after e6, black is doing really well. He's obviously better, but, you know, I would say at least half a pawn better, and at least according to Ribka. And the, this is not where you where you want to be on move 8 <laughs> in an opening. So to avoid this, um, some recent London uh, theory has shown that bishop f4 avoids these kinds of lines. It avoids other lines too, but let me show you why. This it avoids this particular line. So let's say uh, we, we get to the same position, or not same position, here and here's the difference. We, we play knight d2, we just changed the move order. We play knight d2 first instead of knight f3. What, does, what, the, what difference does that make? Well, when black gets into this kind of stuff, this bishop f5 move does no, no longer works because white can just take it. And white has you know, squares, escape squares for his rook. Okay, there's a lot of other reasons bishop f4 is more precise for the London. Um, I'm not going to get into that because that would take up a lot of time. So let's just look at this game uh, again. This player didn't play very well. I just want to whet your appetite a little with the system to show you that this this quote unquote quiet system can can uh, can be pretty devastating if you play incorrectly. Alright, first of all, knight c6. I see this a lot, actually, and it seems baffling to me, because against the London, the London's inherent weakness is this. You have stopped protecting this pawn. So, and the the most logical way of playing, I think, is some, some form of playing queen b6. And, you know, this is impossible without playing c5 first. So, this knight is, uh, I don't know, it, it 
it, it, he's probably looking for this kind of position where he can play a Chigorin, you know, some sort of Chigorin setup. But, uh, you know, White's not going to play that, so... Anyway, so here, uh, I play e3, just standard. Here, black plays another imprecise move. And this move is imprecise in almost every line black plays it, not just with knight c6 first. Just even d6, you know, knight f6 and bishop f5 is, is probably dubious. The reason this is, is not bad, but I would say is one of black's worst options, is that it causes the same weakness in black that white has, and not only that, white has more is much faster mobilizing than black, and he can put very quick pressure on b7. Not to mention that when you play d5, when you've got d5 in the next two, a lot of the time, the queen b3 moves are going to hit both b b7 and d5, which happens in the game, actually. So, after this, I immediately will go play for c4, because, you know, at some point I'm going to play queen b3, so I have to prepare it, and this gains center space. You know, h6. Another, this is a weak move. Uh, they probably should play e6, right? And just uh, develop maybe with bishop here. Uh, you know, flat white's better, but black's okay. So, but h6 is it's kind of like a London idea, right? You, know, you want to play your bishop back. But even in the London, you don't play h3 unless you really have to. I, I avoid it in most lines. I only play h3, and sometimes when the, when knight h5 is, is really threatening. Anyway, uh... Before I play queen b6, I want to develop my knight. Again, I want to put pressure on this. So I might as well have a minor piece on the board that's the best square for the knight. Now, I can play queen b3 immediately, but um, black is able to rid himself of this weakness first. Even though he uh, loses, maybe not immediately this move, but, you know, I don't know. There's a lot of stuff. He can play knight here. And if I check, he plays here. It's just unclear to me. Um, knight's going to c4, and uh, I'd, I'd rather... It's much simpler to just fix this weakness. Just take and, and cause this pawn to be in this uh, weak position. And now when I play queen b3, you know, he can't play moves like this because I just he loses his pawn. The basic difference is that now I'm threatening to immediately take both, both squares. And he has to concede the bishop pair in order to prevent this, because with this move, he uh, pins the knight, so I can't take. Oh, sorry about that. And I also can't take on b7. So I I immediately attack it. I want to convert my one type of advantage to another. I've converted my dynamic uh, pressure into a bishop pair. And I still have the open b file, and b7 is weak. He should he should probably have played this move, uh, rook b8. It's a little awkward, but I mean, what can you do, right? It's uh, defending, and you're not weakening any further. 